I'm really excited. Why? This is the Southland Bass by Curtin Smith Guitars, and I have been wanting to play one of these for a couple of years. Um, I designed this pickup for Curtin Smith Guitars. Um, he does a four string model, a five string model, and a guitar, uh, fretted, fretless, uh, and I've never had the opportunity to play one because he's over 10,000 miles away. He's in New South Wales, Australia. I'm in New England. And for two years, I've been dying to play one of these things because I haven't really had the opportunity to test out this pickup that I designed two years and a month and a half ago um, until now. And ah, it's, it's so amazing. It's phenomenal. The tone is phenomenal, but also the bass is phenomenal. And that's really what I'm talking about, uh, I, or what I want to be talking, telling everyone about right now. When I designed this, this pickup, I... Um, I just floated it on top of a P bass that was on my bench. It was plugged in, but it was not in the bass. It was on top of the strings. So I could really only hear the open strings and it's not the same as actually being able to play the bass. And that was uh, over two years ago. And uh, it, you just, you can't really get a feel for it. But when I did do that, I knew that this was something that was really special, uh, that this was really just one of the best bass tones ever. Uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so this year he was running a sale. This was actually the prototype. And uh, one of my regular customers who have been eyeing these bases for quite a while, um, took advantage of this sale to get this prototype base. So it arrived uh, pretty much as soon as it arrived, he brought it over to me know knowing how important it was for me to be able to play this base, uh, really put it through, through its paces. Uh, but also not just the pick up the, the bass itself and really check it out. So um, uh, it's just so exciting to have it here. Um, the price point that he has is lower than what his build quality is. His build quality is definitely above what he's charging. And uh, I really wanted to, to take note of that. I have seen as a guitar builder and as a repairman, and I also make pickups and that's what you guys mostly know me as, um, I have seen dozens, hundred, uh, boutique hand-built guitars that were terrible, like absolutely terrible, uh, truss rods that on a brand new guitar were completely maxed out, frets that weren't seated all the way, or, uh, the fret slot was too narrow when you put, press the frets in, causing it to back bow and you can't do anything about it unless you refret it. It's a brand new guitar for $4,000. Ridiculous stuff like that. Necks that were not carved straight, um... Bridges that were in the wrong place, although yeah, Gibson does that. Um, so many, so many, so many flaws, and this is not one of those. And the price point, at the price point that he's at, you kind of wonder, like, well, is the build quality actually going to be there? It is. It absolutely is. And um, the first thing that I did when the, when the base came in was to check the neck carve. Uh, because without the neck you really just basically have a piece of furniture. If the frets are not installed correctly, the neck is not carved correctly, the nut is not cut correctly, you basically just have a piece of furniture with strings on it and uh, and you can plug it in, but it is not actually an instrument. So the first thing that I did was I checked the neck and you run your hand across the back of the neck and it's perfectly straight, or you put a straight edge on it. It's perfectly straight all the way across and the carve is even the entire length of the neck and it's phenomenal. Um, that is a, a skill. Uh, you have to be taught to do that correctly. And it's something that is so easy for, I guess, a ton of people to just phone it in and not really put the time into doing it perfectly. Uh, and that's very unfortunate. Yeah, we're kind of in a, the golden age and dark age of boutique hand-built guitars right now. Um, there are more boutique builders now than there ever has been, um, but most of them are really, really bad. They're either just doing bullshit copies of, of the same guitars that you've been able to get for decades upon decades, 
or they're just doing really, really terrible work or both. And that's really disappointing. This is not one of those. This is a unique design that's not too far out there, but it definitely isn't your regular everyday base. And the build quality is spectacular. The frets are perfectly level. I talked about the neck being perfectly straight. Uh, you can see that the bridge, the pickup, the pull pieces on the strings, the strings on the neck, it's perfectly centered on the center line. Um, you can see that the saddles are not all the way forward on the bridge. They're not all the way back. It actually intonates, and this, the saddles are centered, um, or intonated, but in the center of their ability to move forward and backward. So it's not like you put the bridge in the wrong place. It's in the right place. Everything is done correctly on this base, which doesn't seem like a hard thing to do, yet go ahead and try to pick out you know, another two, three, four thousand dollar $4,000 hand-built boutique guitar, and a lot of those things are gonna be wrong. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that I was really excited about. You know, I built these uh, I built these pickups for for different builders, and you know, you never really know if uh, they're going in a quality built instrument. So I've been making these for Kern Smith for two years. It seemed like it from his pictures and his videos that everything was on the up and up, um, but you really don't know until you can actually play it. I've been playing this thing for a week, and it is phenomenal. Uh, so I recommend to anyone who is interested in a short scale lightweight bass with a unique body shape and tone that plays perfectly and is built phenomenally, uh, get it. Get one now before he realizes that he should be raising his prices because he absolutely should be raising his prices. So take advantage of that while you can. Um, I highly recommend it. So let's go into the specs of this bass. It is a lightweight swamp ash body. He has choices for tone wood. So this one is the prototype. Um, built two years ago lightweight swamp ash body it is really lightweight uh the entire base is five and a half pounds uh being that he is in a country that uses the metric system it's 2.5 kilogram kilograms um the neck is roasted flame maple i don't know if the flame is going to show up on video um roasted is a process of pulling all of the oxygen out of a kiln uh, really cranking up the heat and it caramelizes the wood. It dries it out completely and it makes it really stable. Um, I don't know what the truss rod is that he's using because I didn't have to take the truss rod cover off. Is there a truss rod cover? Where's the truss rod access? Oh, it's over there. I haven't touched the truss rod because it came from Australia perfectly set up. It traveled all the way to the other end of the, of the world without ever changing uh, the neck relief. The setup was still perfect right out of the bag. Fantastic. Um, so I don't know what the quality of the truss rod is, but it didn't need a truss rod adjustment after that much travel. Uh, you're changing everything, uh, weather-wise, climate-wise, um, and it didn't need any setup. So the neck is very stable. Uh, the wood can do that. The truss rod can do that. The frets are perfectly level. The frets are really small, which was very different from me, for me. Uh, the, the frets, they, the mandolin fret wire. They play really fast. Uh, usually basses have huge fret wire and this has mandolin fret wire. So that was very different. Um, so it kind of plays like a fretless, like action and speed wise, but it is fretted um, for accuracy. So that's really nice. He does make them as fretless as well. Um, so that was a little weird, but it's actually really nice. It's very comfortable. The setup was is with really low action. It's very comfortable to play. He has a zero fret. All the guitars that I build use zero frets. So I'm always a, uh, a advocate for, for zero frets. Uh, if they're done correctly, um, there are companies like Gretsch. They'll do like a jumbo fret for the zero fret and the rest of the frets are you know smaller. It's not supposed to be like that. All the frets are supposed to be the same size. He does it correctly. And the, the nut, which just holds the strings in place, is cut evenly and correctly. So that's great. I mean, everything is just done right on this bass. Um, it is so lightweight. I put it in a few people's hands and they instantly fall in love with it. All of the tones are fantastic. And I'll get to that. Um, but it plays so fast and it's so unbelievably lightweight. It is so, it's a joy to play. So this pickup, um, going all the way back to two and a half years ago, uh, he reached out to me because one of his customers wanted to have a base built with a mudbucker and I sell a ton of mudbuckers. Uh, your options are either to buy the really, really cheap ones that sound terrible or you buy vintage ones that really also don't sound that great, but you pay a ton of money for them. I'm right in the middle. They sound better than anything else that you can get. and. Um, 
they are affordable. So I sell a ton of mud buckers. That's how he found me, uh, even though he's in Australia and I'm in New England. And uh, we were talking about what his customers' total needs were. We went with another pickup. And at the end of all of this, I said, um, if you ever want to do something custom that's proprietary, uh, let me know because I'm always open to do something like that. He said, actually, yeah, I'm looking into that. Um, so he sent me some links, uh, three or four links to videos of bass tones that he really loved. Um, they were traditional construction bass pickups, uh, but with different tones. And uh, I could have gone the easy route and said, yeah, sure, let's do um, two pickups. No, that's not my style. I want to I wanna come up with something new and custom. And I came up with this idea, which is basically two P90s together for bass. Like, why was the bass P90 never even invented? Like, Gibson, where were you? <laughs> you should have done that back in the 40s and 50s. Bass P90, it's the best one ever. So anyways, um, I came up with this idea. I took my alternate dimension P90, guitar P90, which has 12 pulpy screws, is a true single coil. Um, it's really responsive. Uh, it's got a bigger coil than a normal P90, so it's better than a normal P90. So I reduced the strings down to four strings to make it a bass, and I doubled it up to be a humbucker, so there's two of these coils on a bass plate and sharing the cover. And then, I went low output. Uh, that was something that he was looking for, something that was lower output. And low output doesn't actually mean volume, it just means low wind, um, which gives you a cleaner tone. So it's lower output, and then the two coils are wound with different wire gauges. Um, one coil with one wire gauge, the other coil with a different wire gauge. The same number of turns, it's still perfectly hum canceling. Uh, both coils are always on, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but it, it fattens the tone up, even though it's lower output, so that's really cool. Uh, and of course, there's four bar magnets. The magnetic field shape on this thing is phenomenal. It's huge. The aperture is enormous. I mean, the pickup's enormous, but the aperture is enormous. It is just, it's a big tone. The wiring, uh, which we worked on together as well, series parallel wiring. So a brief lesson on series wiring, parallel wiring. Um, most instruments, electric instruments, guitars, basses, like 99% of electric instruments, when two pickups are on, they're on in parallel. And in parallel means that both pickups are on and the signal is going towards the output jack, uh, whether it's going through a switch or volume and tone pots, it's still going towards the output jack. So if, if these two pickups are 8K DC resistance, um, the output, the DC resistance output when both pickups are on in parallel, it's about half the average, it's 4K DC resistance. Now in series wiring, uh, parallel wiring backup, whether these are humbuckers or they're single coils when two pickups are on, they are wired in parallel. Your Les Paul, your Stingray bass with two humbuckers, uh, your Strat, when two pickups are on, they're in parallel. In series wiring, the signal from one coil or pickup is then sent into the other coil or pickup, and then that goes to the output jack, and that doubles the resistance. So those same two pickups, their AK DC resistance, when they're wired in series, the output is 16K. Now these coils are not 8K DC resistance, they're low wind. Um, this has a series parallel switch. In series, it is 7K DC resistance. Um, which again, even though that is lower than the standard 8K DC resistance for most pickups, doesn't mean output volume. Um, this is a big loud pickup. Um, it's just a different voice. DC resistance really responds, it really is a, a, a poor metric for voice. It's a poor metric in this industry, but it's industry standard, that's what we use. So in series, it's 7K DC resistance. In parallel, it's 1.7. Okay, DC resistance. Um, so vastly different. And then the other switch is a tone switch. Um, it's like having two tone pots, uh, both of them rolled back all the way with two different capacitors that you can switch in between. So on one end, we've got a less dark capacitor. On the other end, we've got a more dark capacitor. And then in the middle, it's disconnected. And so when it's disconnected, what you've got is just the, um, the pickup either wired in series or parallel, going to the volume and then out, it skips the tone switch altogether. Those capacitors are not part of the tone signal when the tone switch is in the middle position. Um, 
So with this single pickup, with this wiring, you get six different tones. Um, three different tone options for series and then again for parallel. It's phenomenal. You get so much out of this. Um, so I'm going to play some clips for you. I highly, highly recommend everyone check out Curtin Smith Guitars because he has them priced too low. So take advantage of that. Uh, I'll play some stuff for you. This thing's phenomenal. I am so happy to have it here. Uh, I am not being paid to make this video. I am making this video because I'm excited about it and I want everyone else to be excited about it. Um, so definitely check them out. And uh, thank you very much.